Hey guys, how's it going? Thank you so much for joining me on another video. In today's episode, we'll be covering um, essentially largest contentful paint, what it is, and how to optimize for it. So, if you've missed my previous video, I did cover how to optimize for cumulative light shift. I've put in the link above here. Please feel free to check it out because that will basically get you up to speed on that um, core vital. Now, to optimize this core vital, um, basically, please stick around for the video because we're going to tell you how to essentially identify what it is and how to optimize for it. Now, before we get into the video, I just wanted to make a quick announcement that I've made my own private SEO um, Facebook group and essentially it's called the SEO Tribe. So check it out and essentially what it's designed for, it's basically to help um, anyone in the community that's struggling with any SEO problems that they may be having. Um, we're here to also discuss um, SEO community news and just to assist where possible. So definitely if you feel like that's a group that you may benefit from, please check out the link in the description down below. So now let's get into the video of largest contentful paint. So what is the largest contentful paint? The largest contentful paint is the largest element on your screen. And um, this is essentially, um, it could be text such as like paragraphs. This can be images or videos. And the way it works is that the largest contentful paint can change over time as a page loads. So I've put up a image on the screen above here, which shows highlighted by the green box that as the page progresses through its loading process, the largest contentful paint charges from, ch sorry, changes from text to image. And then I have another example of largest contentful paint on Instagram where it doesn't change. It's just that remaining box that's highlighted in green. And it doesn't change from the very beginning to um, the end of the page loading. So that's just one thing to take into consideration is that you, just by viewing a page, you may not get the actual proper outcome of what the largest contentful paint may be. But most of the time, it's fairly easy to diagnose visually. However, there is a way that you can figure this out by using Google developer tools so before I show you, I just wanted to quickly talk a little bit more about this core vital. So I'll quickly put up an image above here, which is Google's official kind of guide for um, a largest contentful paint. So there's a color coded metric from red being poor to green being the best. And anything that scores four seconds or above is essentially, you know, poor in terms of loading for LCP or large condensed paint. And then for the best score, you want to get two seconds or below. So primarily we'll be trying to aim to get that two seconds. Cool. Now, um, going on to Google developer tools, um, in order for you to identify what it is, the element on your page, first of all, please go into incognito mode because it will ensure that there won't be any false positives because I tried doing this test multiple times on various pages and I've realized that there were different outcomes when it was in a regular browser mode compared to incognito. I believe the accuracy was much greater. So please take that in mind before you do this um, yourself. So what we'll be doing is going into the developer toolbar, going into the performance tab and running a um, basic um, recording of the page and then we will indicate what the LCP is or why just condensed the page. So here's a video of that now. So please enjoy. Cool. Hopefully you got a lot of value out of that. And if you guys have any questions about doing that, please drop a comment below in the video. Uh, sorry, I should say below this video. Cool. Now moving along. Um, so now you've basically been able to identify what it is, so what's the largest contentful paint element? Now, you wanna figure out what's your actual score. So one way of going about it is you can go onto Google Developer Tools and use the Lighthouse um, feature, and essentially it will tell you what your score is. Another way you can do it is use Google PageSpeed Insights tool, and basically that will just do that test. You plug in your URL and it will show you 
what your score is uh, across the other core of Vardos as well, along with first input delay and cumulative layout. Score is uh, across the other core of Vardos as well, along with first input delay and cumulative layout shift. So now you've basically been able to understand what is your score and what is the resource on your page that is your largest cumulative paint. So now we're making progress. So now you might ask, okay, what is the best way to go about optimizing this? So there's a few strategies involved. So there's a popular one, which is called the PRPL pattern, which is basically standing for preloading, sorry, preloading, rendering, pre-caching, and lazy loading. So I'll quickly explain to you what these elements are. So preloading is a method of when you basically get a HTML code and you embed it in between the head tags on your uh, source code. And what it enables you to do is enables you to load elements slightly faster because it preloads it. So as the browser is loading elements on your, from your page, it just loads things a little bit faster where possible. So you can apply this code to HTML, CSS, JavaScript, images, videos, and fonts as well to a degree. And one other one is service workers, which I'll also explain later on. So, um, essentially that's one way of doing that. And um, you have rendering. Um, essentially that's one way of doing that. And um, you have rendering. So you may be familiar with things such as render blocking assets or certain elements such as render blocking JavaScript or CSS. So that's one thing that I'll be touching upon very shortly. But when it comes to rendering, we're talking about uh, critical path rendering. So what is critical path rendering? Essentially what it is, it's when a browser loads three elements, which is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And as these elements are being rendered by the browser and loading them, it actually creates the image that you see on your screen. So it loads the pixels onto your screen and it creates an image. So essentially that's what happens in the background as your page is loading. There's HTML, the CSS and JavaScript that's starting to load. And browsers load and render, um, I should say render rather than load, um, HTML really, really smoothly. Um, and the way it works is that it just pretty much goes through um, without a problem. But whenever the browser encounters anything that is CSS or JavaScript, it has to slow down the rendering and it has to wait because it technically blocks the rendering process. This isn't necessarily a bad thing because CSS and JavaScript is important on a website. However, it is important to note the file sizes. You know, you don't want to have massive amounts of JavaScript and CSS on your page, especially if it isn't relevant or it doesn't provide any user experience benefits, any benefits whatsoever on the page. So just take into consideration how your CSS and JavaScript is used, especially if there's blocks and blocks and blocks of it. And going back to the previous statement I was making is that when um, the browser encounters this as the page is being rendered, the CSS and JavaScript elements, it does tend to slow it down. So there's a few ways of improving the way that these browsers render these two elements. One of them is using a plugin. You can do something like WP Rocket, for example, which will help you to um, essentially optimize the CSS delivery and possibly defer the way these JavaScript elements are loaded onto your page, which makes your page load faster. Another way is just taking into consideration what type of um, elements are being used from CSS and JavaScript. And you might be surprised that certain elements aren't necessarily used to the full potential or, you know, there's certain elements they may not need to have there. But definitely speak to a web developer, a front-end web developer to make sure that, you know, what decisions are right for you from that perspective. But I'd suggest using a plugin first to see how well your website can benefit from such optimizations. Then we have something called pre-caching. So that's something that I'm going to discuss now because I did mention before something called um, a server worker and sorry, a service worker, not a server worker, service worker. So the way it works is that a service worker operates on pre-caching. So what does that mean? I'll quickly put up an image here. The way it works is that the um, browser, it works in the background with the browser. It's a piece of JavaScript, basically. And it basically works in such a way where it 
loads elements from a pre-caching state. So it loads elements fast. So as you can see, the traditional way at the top is that it, the browser sends a request to the server and it goes back and forth, back and forth. While this one cuts that in half, essentially, as it's basically like a proxy. And it's in between both the browser and the server. And it just takes elements from a pre-caching state. <clears throat> so this doesn't work on the first time when a page is loaded. But the second time around the page is loaded, it just operates much, much faster in terms of loading. Then you finally have something called lazy loading. So lazy loading, uh, I'll pop up an image here. So lazy loading is something that is, is really interesting. So the way it works is that um, it puts like a placeholder value on like an image, for example, and it doesn't load a specific element until it's visible in the viewport or visible in the screen. And this is something that's really interesting and important from that perspective because the way it works is that it just speeds things up um, for, for loading things initially. And I feel that that's just a much better way of making sure that your web page loads effectively. Just one other thing I want to quickly touch upon when we're going back to pre-caching is that is, um, I'll quickly put up an image of actual the difference in loading times of um, when you compare a service worker and a non-service worker state as you can see that pre-caching does make a really really big difference so that's something I just want to really touch upon pre-caching now what other things can you do to essentially ensure that your page loads faster um, one thing is look at the server that you are basically running or being hosting your page on um, you can have a dedicated server yes this is an expensive approach but it, it does tend to work in terms of improving server speeds and it, once again um, improving how quickly page is loading uh, one other thing would be using a CDN or in other words a content distribution network v popular ones online are Cloudflare for example so what is a content distribution network? A content distribution network is essentially a network of international servers. And the way it works is that a user gets sent to the server that's closest to them in geographical proximity. For example, if I'm searching from Australia, I probably either get a server from New Zealand, Australia, or an Australasia region or Asia Pacific region to ensure that my loading is faster. If I'm from like America or Canada, but Europe, hopefully I get a server that's closer towards those regions and that's the way that works. So that's something you can also look at to improve speeds. And one other thing you can do is look at um, fonts. So if you're using fonts, for example, and your largest condensable paint is like a wall of text, definitely consider preloading fonts. So you can have a few plugins available. I'll quickly put up an image of one here and this the way it works is that this plugin helps browsers preload fonts faster. So what you may not know is that there's web safe fonts. So these are fonts that um, browsers um, basically across the internet can load without any problems. This is New Times Roman, Arial and Courier for example. So that's one thing that you can take into consideration is that if your font is basically something out of these which it most likely is um, and if web fonts have been flagged as a problem or largest contestable paint or just in general for your website for loading speeds definitely consider preloading fonts uh, you could also possibly use um, preloading as in um, the specific preloading that I mentioned before the HTML code to help you load uh, the fonts faster but what I like about preloading fonts using this plugin it helps you pr pretty much load that specific font type for font family quicker as well in the browser and then uh, other things I would also take into consideration is the type of font that you use because you don't want a web, or web page that has like 7 to 12 different fonts. It doesn't make sense. Just stick it to, you know, 1 to 2 different font styles. I think that will make things much, much simpler from that perspective. And then finally, you can also look at um, compressing image sizes. So you can use a tool like TinyPNG, for example, to compress the images sizes to make sure the sizes aren't that big. One other thing you can also look at is the width and dimensions, so the height and width of your image to make sure if an image is a problem, you're going to make sure that it isn't, um, you know, necessarily too big um, from the actual sizing on your page because then once again, you're unnecessarily loading a, an image that's too big. Try and size it to the correct dimensions of the web page. 
Uh, one other element would be, you know, taking into consideration videos. Um, if you're using embedded videos and things of that nature, take into consideration what type of videos they are and how they're loaded, because there's probably different ways you can figure out to serve videos um, to make them a bit more optimized. But the, the biggest culprit is normally images, um, in my experience, that are um, for the largest contentful page, creating quite a few problems for loading. So that's kind of the majority of it. So what you've learned is you've learned what largest contentful paint is, you've learned how to identify it using Google Developer Tools, you've learned what scores Google can give you, and common ways to optimize um, um, for the largest contentful paint. So overall, I hope you guys have had a lot of value out of this. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And basically, um, I'll see you guys on the next video, which will be first input delay. So thank you guys so much for your time and see you in the next video.